on this week's episode of Marketing O'Clock. Breaking the political bandwagon, X lifts its political ad restrictions. LinkedIn is updating their algorithm, so we spoon feed you some good advice on how to do well and do take it personally. In global warning news, YouTube is changing their climate on policy violations. All on today's show. Welcome, you are listening to Welcome. Marketing O'Clock, just stay tuned Digital marketing news, but let's get specific Digital ads, SEO and analytics Social media and more Pretty much everything that'll make your website perform With new shows every Friday We we'll give you the news with sass and puns And definitely high takes Thank you for tuning in You know what time it is it's officially marketing o'clock. Settle in, sit back, keep it locked. Hey there, I'm Greg Finn. I'm Jess Bud. I'm Nicole Waddington. And it is officially marketing o'clock. Here on September 1st, 2023. It's almost fall, folks. Mm -hmm. I I don't call it fall till the, till the 16th. I Have need... you been outside? No, nope, it's fall. Not fall. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am back. I was on a little trip. We talk about this. Once you have kids, you don't have vacations anymore when they're with you at least, right? Like right. you are there and you are surviving and they are the ones that are relaxed and happy and you are just there for the ride. And I think I might be the first person ever to take a trip going to Baltimore and then St. Paul, Minneapolis, the, the tw Twin Cities. Yeah. So those are my kids' favorite baseball teams. So, so we want to go see an Orioles game at Camden Yards. And then go to Minneapolis and see a Twins game. That's Good. why it's called the Twins. The Twin, Twin Cities. Cities yeah. I never thought about yeah, that. Yeah, there's like mm -hmm. a two different people, like the old logo. It's like St. Paul and Minnesota. And Minneapolis. you brought you brought your twins. Brought the twins, yeah. Oh, okay. So Baltimore, not the best. This is really cool how much water there is there, but like the streets of Baltimore, it's it is the second highest rate of urine smell that I've ever smelled is what's, the streets of what's Baltimore. What's the first? Um, the York? pool at our hotel <laughs> in Baltimore. It stunk like urine. It was so cloudy. It was so gross. Ugh. It was really bad. But it just the whole place smells like urine in Baltimore. It was good. Uh, the Orioles won both games. And then I had to go. I didn't have a hotel booked. And I was like looking online for the in Minneapolis one. I like to like live a little dangerously. So I booked a hotel at the Mall of America. They have a hotel? There's a hotel in the Mall of America. I didn't know that. There's like amusement park. In I there. know that. I've been to that. So your windows are like looking out into the mall. That sounds no, amazing. We kind of looked out at the airport. So every time ah, there's a plane, I heard about it. Yeah. But, but um, oh, it's a Southwest one. It's a United one. All right, great. So I was I was like, nah, I don't know. My kids don't like roller coasters that much. But I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to break them. I'm going to break these kids on these roller coasters. So we can like, cause that's fun at least, you know, like going on roller coasters. Mall of America is, it's cool. Have you been you, there? I have. It's I, pretty There crazy. was no hotel when we went. Okay. I was in high school, but it's a nice, it's like, it's a novelty. You should do it once. Yeah. yeah. So I ended up getting many, many roller coaster rides so much so that they were even asking for it. And then my son is like, Hey, you know, it'd be cool if you could take a roller coaster to school. And I'm like, you know what? That would be yeah. really awesome. Mm -hmm. Like imagine taking roller coasters places. That would be amazing. You can like, like public transit is like a roller coaster. That'd be so sweet. I used to pretend roller coasters were trains at the amusement park and I was going somewhere and it was fun. So yeah. we're aligned. Yeah. But M Minneapolis and I guess St. Paul area is way better than Baltimore for taking a trip. Hmm. The stadium in Baltimore is better, but the Mall of America is actually sneaky cool. There's a lot of like, it, it's also, you can see, you can see like it's kind of, degrading a little bit you know what i mean so, as is every mall yeah i know but yeah. i was like maybe this is like so no like it's gonna be bad in like 10 years probably so sad. yeah but anyway there's pictures of me up on the roller coaster and then <laughs> i forced him to go on the log ride and i look like a little baby <laughs> and my son's got his little hood on <laughs> i'm just getting soaked it was really really fun but now i'm so tired and i just come back and it's like i am just happy to be back working back to the grind isn't that funny how that it's works like, yeah mm -hmm. it's like less chaos i don't know mm -hmm. it's like all chaos but less at the same time so i survived my trip Gosh. how about you i um so i'll preface this story in case y'all don't know weed is legal in new york state so just so everyone knows legal drugs and as you know i've been really into like the seltzers and we've talked about that i have recently started actually smoking weed so last night i'm on the porch at my house with my husband and we're smoking a joint kids in bed 
We're having a good time. I don't know how we got on the topic, but we needed to know what time it was in Hawaii. So I tried to Google it on my phone, and my phone or Google thought I was a robot, so I had to do a CAPTCHA, and I was so excited. Can't get you that information. <laughs> like, no. It wanted to make sure She's I wasn't a something. robot. So um, by the way, they don't have daylight savings in mm-hmm. Hawaii, so they're like five or six hours behind depending on the time of year. Anyway, so I did this CAPTCHA, and I'm really excited, and Chris is like, you should – See if there's a CAPTCHA game out there. That was just so much fun for you. So I Googled CAPTCHA test and I found the first result was like a GitHub. Some guy just put up a CAPTCHA that you can just play with. It's not a game. It's a real thing. I was having so much fun doing CAPTCHAs. I did so many. I took screenshots. I have some really fun ones. There was one with a sign that said Shepard. Maybe think of Shep. Guys, look at this. Okay. So here's the first one that I got. I took a screenshot. I'm going to Did you pass all of them? No, I did some of them wrong because some of them are really hard. They are. There's some new ones that are really tricky. I sat on my porch last night and did CAPTCHAs for 22 minutes. (laughs) Okay. We need to – Nicole, you and I are going to talk for a second. Yeah. We need to have intervention (laughs) with her. It was so fun. I saved the link. I actually – I saved the link. I'm really happy for her. I support this. I – I'm surprised it was only 20, what did you say, 22 minutes? 22 minutes. I could have kept oh, going. 11.05 and then <sighs> to 11.27 p.m. I had to do, yeah. I had to do a CAPTCHA. I, I got so mad today at this CAPTCHA. Oh. I had to rotate a pig in the same direction oh. of the weird yeah. bent yeah. finger. Yeah, the finger. And I always get it wrong. <clears throat> well, you like CAPTCHA so much. You might even be able to find one in the amazing Wix app market. And that is our sponsor today this week. Wix.com, Wix.com, Wix.com. I don't think we really need to say more, but we will. And they just have a new integration with SE ranking. It's pretty amazing. I watched the video for it. You get all the power of SE ranking right in Wix. You can see tons of keyword data, everything you love from SE ranking, including volume, difficulty for certain keywords. You can even see who your direct competitors are then break it down into what they're targeting and what is working the best for them and how they're getting traffic into which pages all right there in Wix. And you can even see all of their ads, the Mm -hmm. ad copy, everything they're running in Google ads directly within Wix. It's why it's the only platform that we recommend is Wix.com. And you can get this new integration, 14-day free trial, and then there are SE ranking plans that start at just $5 a month. And I think that's something else that, again, you want to put captures all over your site, check out the, the Wix app market, right? They're allowing people to innovate and bring their products to Wix.com, to your site, and it's why it is phenomenal. They put up so much work to make you and your website a success. It's amazing. And they're even adding to Serps Up. There is now a new monthly episode that will be added to Serps Up called the Serps Up Plus that's going to talk more than just SEO. And there's already one episode launched with the um, Tenuity's president of Commerce Strategic Services, Elizabeth Marsden. She is maybe the smartest person I've ever heard talk about commerce and Amazon. She's specific to that. Um, And she also has on the senior director of Amazon, Joe O'Connor, and they talk about how AI is playing a role in Amazon success and where Amazon and e-commerce are heading. It's the reason you want to use Wix. It's because they care. It's because you want to put your bottom line with a company that goes all out and there is nobody better than Wix. Wix Wix.com, Wix.com, Wix.com. So first up in the news, X is bringing back political ads. So this is a reversal of the decision from former CEO Jack Dorsey. And X spokesperson has said it is a commitment to free speech and said, starting in the U.S., we'll continue to apply specific policies to paid for promoted political posts. This will include prohibiting the promotion of false or misleading content, including false or misleading information intended to undermine public confidence in the election while seeking to preserve free and open political discourse. We'll also provide a global advertising transparency center so everyone can review political posts being promoted on X, in addition to robust screening processes to ensure only eligible groups and campaigns are able to advertise. So I feel like the timing of this is pretty important, given that there was the first Republican debate that happened at this point 
two weeks ago. Um, not completely surprised since Elon Musk has been pretty vocal about protecting free speech on the platform. And I, I think this is good. It's going to make right? them money. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. A hundred percent. Which I mean, they there's, can put back into the platform. There is so much spent on, po- mm-hmm. on and, and I'm not even talking just presidential. I mean, right. across the yeah. board. And if you can get your message out there to more people, like I understand there's like a huge, huge divide in at least uh, America here. But that's like a good form where you can, if you're a local politician or even a presidential, one of those, how come there are so many Republican candidates and there's only one Democratic one? Like, well, how does that even work? But yeah, like you're one of those 12 people up there in the Republican primary. <laughs> good. Put that out there because you don't have any screen time. So I think it's fine. Yeah, definitely going to make make a lot of money. Hope for well, Elon's hoping clearly. But honestly, like, why would why would anybody be against this? Like, it doesn't seem there's no real reason to be against this, right? Yeah, as long as you do it right, which it sounds like they have good intentions. So, um. yeah. I don't know. Speaking of good intentions, this is not the world's biggest news by any means, but it's kind of a slow week, and I just hate not talking here in the main news section. Wait, I just wrote my uh, write-in ballot. I voted for uh, Cheech and Chong on the cruise cruise. <laughs> well, thank goodness, because they are still alive, and they could totally run this country, and they are already running X. <laughs> so... Um, Anyone active on LinkedIn, listen up. The platform has updated its algorithm to factor in more engagement signals to improve the performance and personalization of the feed. The TLDR from LinkedIn expert Richard Vanderblom says, LinkedIn is showing you more content from the people and pages you engage with the most. They're putting more focus on hashtag engagement to highlight relevant topics to users. LinkedIn's reduced notifications for certain actions, which is interesting. And posts are now seeing more reach over time as opposed to gaining the most traction on the first day. And these are just things that he's seeing that that's not from LinkedIn. That's from somebody analyzing it. So what does this mean for marketers? For one thing, <clears throat> note that you may see changes in the engagement with and reach of your posts, again, in one direction or another. The hot tip here, though, is don't just post and move on. You should work to build value around community engagement, reply to comments, use relevant hashtags, share topical updates. These are all the things you should be doing anyway if you want to have a successful social presence, but just a reminder that these things are going to be a little bit more important on LinkedIn going forward. So be a good marketer and pay attention. Now it's time for this week's Take of the Week. This is a hashtag fire digital marketing take with extra spice served up for you. We simply deliver the take for your consumption. We give no opinions. We don't influence. You make the call. This week's take of the week comes by way of search engine roundtable. And Barry wrote a story on this. And also like Barry, did you see his most recent show? He's like, I'm sorry that I'm, I I can't speak talk that loud. He's like outside, like next to an uh, air conditioning unit, like on the street. He's like, I'm on vacation. I'm like Barry. A trip or vacation? Oh, he's on vacation. Oh, so good for him. Like Barry. He's got kids. So like we appreciate you. <clears throat> anyway, the name of the article was reminder, stop emailing Google with your undetectable links that you buy and sell. And Danny had a post that said, we got mail. Buying and selling links for ranking purposes is against our spam policies. If somebody says they're undetectable, Google would never know. Remember, they might be making the same pitch to us here at Google with actual URLs for us to check. And shows a screenshot of an email that Danny, the search liaison for Google, got. And it said, um, he responded, it looked like somebody at Google said they um, wanted to share some of the examples of the posts that this link seller was offering. And they said, here are the examples and sent over all the different sites that you could buy links on. So um, this is the Danny we need. This is the Danny we love. Um, Yep, we got mail and they're undetectable, but not Not anymore. Not anymore because they're just trying to sell them right to Google themselves. Now it's time for this week's I See Why Am I. I See Why Am I, people. This is something you just might not have seen. Maybe something that you overlooked, but you shouldn't have. Right. This week's ICYMI comes from Mike Ryan at Mike Ryan Retail on X. He posted, FYI, we're facing a situation where the advertiser's titles are being automatically prepended with a competitor's brand name. 
This not only risks performance, but also reputational and potentially legal harm. Keep your eyes open. And he has a screenshot from the Google article about optimized titles. And he expands to say the issue was detected early July, acknowledged and supposedly fixed in the third week of July, but still persisting. Google acknowledged this, quote, could have something to do with our internal tool, but can't be shared due to proprietary reasons. And then a bunch of people responded in the thread, like Sean Ellie said, just had this issue come up and had to get a Google rep to submit a form saying we wanted to opt out. Boris Besserich said, you can write to your rep and they can opt you out. Grants the question, of course, what on earth are you supposed to do (laughs) if you don't have a rep? So keep an eye out for that. Now it's time for this week's Pew Pew Lightning Round. At this point in the show, we split up our content into three parts. Paid, organic, and social. First up in the paid universe this week, we covered on the show before that shopping campaigns will stop being eligible for the eCPC bidding strategy starting in October of this year. And it looks like Thomas Assel at Thomas Assel on X spotted a new feature in the shopping settings for a one-click Target ROAS for standard shopping campaigns. Target ROAS ROAS experiments for shopping lets you test Target ROAS against your standard shopping campaigns using manual CPC or eCPC bidding and measure the impact. And he has a screenshot of what he saw in his Google ad settings. um, And it looks like it's just probably a checkbox or something. I don't know. It's not expanded, but check your campaigns. See if it's there. And Anthony Higman at Anthony Higman on X posted, uh, just saw this update. So I guess this is Google's way, sneaky way of getting search partner traffic back up. Higman. <laughs> Delayed. <laughs> <laughs> Quote, to help you reach more potential customers, your ads will not now show on content that matches any of the topics, placements, or display video keywords you target. For example, if you targeted bikes as a topic and cycling, As a display video keyword, your ads will show on content that matches either. And then he says, does this apply to search campaigns based on my display ads targeting? What are keywords? What are, what is targeting? (laughs) So you could put in, in your search terms, I'm going to negate cycling because I saw bikes. And then if you show on video towards things related to cycling, you will then start to show in search for cycling. Is that right? No, I think it's if you are bidding on a search term in a search campaign, and then you also are using like a keyword segment for your display campaigns. It's saying that it will use that as a signal too. I'm just very confused. All right. And heads up for anyone who might be running discovery campaigns. Google ads has said that they're fixing a discovery campaign issue. You might've gotten an email. Menaham Ani did and posted a screenshot on X of it. Google is saying that it's trying to fix it, which the issue was causing some account level site and app category exclusions to prevent the delivery of discovery ads to Google properties such as Gmail. So if your account has a Google property site exclusion like mail.gmail.com or an app category exclusion for Gmail's app categories, then they will no longer block ads delivery on Gmail starting on September 5th. So you might want to check your performance. You might see a conversion drop or an ROI drop from this. And then I know that some people did do this because they were worried that people that might have opted out of a newsletter would think that they were getting email. Mm-hmm. Um, so that mm-hmm. would be really the only reason you should be doing that is if you were just trying to make it look like you weren't sending people email. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I guess if, if that's something that you had to do for legal reasons, you can't use Discovery anymore, you know, as of September 5th. Mm-hmm. And Precise TV and Giraffe Advertiser Report found that 6 in 10 teens would watch YouTube ad rather than skip it, while almost half can recall an ad that they've seen on the platform. These are people like Jess that like these CAPTCHAs. Who wants to watch an ad? (laughs) My child. 
I keep trying to skip commercials for him and he's like, leave it. I want to watch this. And it's for like cars that you can buy, not toy cars. He's really mm-hmm. into it. So, oh. yeah. So Runs I guess he's part blood. of Gen Z. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, some more findings the report found were that almost eight in 10 teens watch YouTube, making it the number one platform in this market. 45% of teens are likely to recall an ad they've seen on YouTube. They're twice as likely to recall an ad on YouTube rather than TikTok. And YouTube is where teens see the best and most engaging ads. It makes sense. I mean, you I remember TV commercials as a child. And this right. is just that that generation's version of that. Yeah. It makes sense to me. I like watching ads. And Lawrence Chase at L Chase on X shared a screenshot of an email he got from Google which says, I'm reaching out because you previously requested support for, and then he blanks out the name, Google Ads account via email communication exclusively. However, there have been updates to our strategic partnership program, which require meeting over the phone or in person. In person? In person? (gasps) Once every four weeks. That is horrifying. No, thank you. He writes, new email tactic from Google to try and get phone meetings. When you manage a lot of accounts, it's not feasible or practical for folks to do. At Ads Liaison, there has not been a change that is requiring this. Is there? Yeah. Clearly. I'm going to opt for in person every time. Yeah, make them You would have here, so though. much fun. You would. That'd be fun. You, you would, would have so much fun. Okay. We're doing, we're doing a remote <laughs> show this week. I've got uh, our, our Google rep here. Once every four weeks. <laughs> four weeks. Wow. A lot of advertisers on X, it seemed – including myself, received a notification in Google Ads platform, including Dwayne Brown at Dwayne Brown on X, who said, change history bug for the last couple weeks on Google Ads. And the notification says, missing change history content. Account changes made between August 16th, 2 p.m. Pacific, and August 25th, 7 p.m. Pacific time may not appear in your change history. There's no impact to your ad serving or account changes you make. We are working to resolve the issue. I hope nobody was doing anything sneaky during that time. I know. I was going to say. You never know. Yeah. That does impact. People use the change history to figure things out. Right. That that does impact indirectly, I guess. But still, that's a big deal. Next up, Boris Besserick at Boris Besserick on X posted, here's a useless email if I've ever seen one. At least tell me the client ID. By the way, all my accounts track conversions. And he has a screenshot of the email. I received this email too, was also equally as confused. (laughs) And the headline says from Google, your auto tagging setup doesn't allow you to measure your conversions. And it just looks like a generic like boilerplate email. Nowhere in the email does it say what account it's referring to. It doesn't even like try to put your name in the hello. Hello. Salutation, right? I don't know. It was just super confusing got me panicked for a little bit because I was like, what account is this for? And then I realized it went out to everyone. So just know your accounts, people. And Mark Subel took to X to share an email from a Google rep that said, while my preference is to partner with you directly in red text, I will now be attempting to contact the client directly with the intention that they can help me get in touch with you. No. <laughs> No. Wow. (laughs) But thanks for the warning. Yeah. I can't believe they made it red like that. I know. I can. That's how you you read when you see it like that. That is like – They should have put it in comic And it looks in bold too. too, And I don't know if he added this underline just to highlight it or if the underline was there. But I think it's added because – Well, can you have your underline be in a different color than your font? Oh, yeah. He might have added it. But it looks very threatening. Very I'll say. Yeah. And Ben Kruger responded to this and said, they are salespeople. What would you do if you were paid based on getting your end client to do something? Find more suckers. Be helpful. <laughs> like, how about you yeah. be helpful? Like, mm. imagine, A fine imagine tip. that. Yeah. Right? Like, mm-hmm. that's that's what we do, right? We have to try to get our clients to implement things and put the right tracking, do everything. And it's like, Here's what we can do. We can be helpful. I'm going to make a loom showing you how to do this. Mm-hmm. Hey, blah, blah, blah. There you go. You don't need to threaten them and say, I'm going to go straight to your developer client if you don't do this. <laughs> yeah, no, be yeah. helpful and try to like use tools to, to make people want to talk to you. Also flip the script, Ben. Like it is our job. We don't get paid if we don't do well for the client. Right. So not interacting with someone that's useless and saving that time to do real work 
Like you could say that about either side. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And I can't tell you how many times I've been on one of these calls and like, well, you should implement value-based bidding. And I say, I only care about the SQLs that we're driving. We're tracking everything else. We're, we're optimizing towards SQLs. So tell me how the value-based bidding is going to be different. Like, well, why don't you put in the number for that? And I said, if I put a number in for the amount that the SQL is worth, what is the difference of just one value in there compared to target CPA? And they don't have an answer for that. And they're like, well, let me talk with my team. And then you never hear from them again. It's because you don't know what value-based bidding is. You have no clue what value-based bidding is. I don't have, like, in this one account, Google can send a ton of spam. We only go towards SQLs. And it's like, that's it. That's gold. That's all that matters at the moment. If it changes, we're going to do value-based bidding. I don't need to complicate things into value-based bidding when all it does is optimize towards a number. And they're like, well, you can use target ROAS. I don't need to use target ROAS. I can do target CPA. The same thing. If you have one conversion, there's no need for value-based bidding. And that's all these reps work because you get paid by putting value-based bidding. And then I just waste a half hour and then I'm sitting here ranting about it. I'll fire it up. Sam at Digital Sam I Am said in response, Ben Kruger, at least we can all admit that, that being that they're salespeople. And then he writes, they don't know the product. They aren't here to help. They're here to sell. And Ben says, I agree with one out of three of these. And, and what he's saying is that they're here to sell. Yeah, yeah. for sure. For, but I'm just, I'm just saying there is so much wasted time from these reps that do not know the product. And there are reps that know the product. Ben knows the product. Ben would be a, a great rep if you had them, if you had Ben to talk to. I meet him in person once every four weeks. Yeah. <laughs> but like most of the people don't know the product and try to put you in, put you into these programs. And it's, it's I, it, the thing that irked me the most is back when Maximize Clicks came out. And everybody, you got paid by getting people on a Maximize Clicks. And it's like, you do not understand that this is not helping the client at all. I don't want more clicks. I want more sales. And when that came out and you're like, it was so transparent. Like, this is not what the business objectives are. Every rep is like, let's get a maximize clicks. Maximize clicks. And you're like, no, no, I don't want that. And guess what? Nobody tries to push it anymore because it's stupid and wrong and doesn't help the actual bottom line. So yes, I agree with all three of those, Sam. <laughs> Just a super quick FYI, Google Ads API version 12 will sunset on September 27th of this year. So developers, be advised to migrate to the newer version before then to ensure your API access is not affected. All right. First up, this week's organic section is brought to you by Wix. Wix has the best SEO podcast out there. You've already heard us talk about the new SERPs Up Plus that's coming out once a month, the bonus episode. But each week, Morty and Crystal Carter, well, Morty Overseen, they're not like together. Yeah. Um, Morty Overseen and Crystal Carter put out an awesome episode that dives deep into a certain uh, SEO topic. And episode 52 had Mark Williams Cook and Kaylee Moore, and they talked about the people also ask and the content that Google prefers. So they have keep it light, they keep it fun, and it's another reason why you should choose Wix when you are looking to build your next website. And first up in the organic news, we've got some charts from Lily Ray and Glenn Gabe. Whenever there's an algorithm update, these are the only two people that you need to follow. Glenn and Lily have you covered. Lily had a bunch of examples, one showing a site lost 35% of its visibility since the core update started, a niche travel site, no evidence of real humans, ads everywhere, stock photos. They already published 12 articles today. And then Glenn highlighted a bunch of drops as well. One was um, a reversal from the early August volatility and then some saw huge drops. So again, follow Glenn and follow Lily if you want to see everything that's going on with the algo updates. All right, and next up, YouTube is changing the way that warnings are working. And just a quick recap, if you don't know how YouTube works, if we say something inappropriate, it go against Google, uh, YouTube's guidelines, we can get a warning. <clears throat> and it takes 90 days to expire. And before that, you would just have this warning that would sit there for those 90 days. So if you've got that warning on, 
you can and you break the rules again, you get what's called your first strike. Um, you can't upload videos for a week, do a stream, create, uh, create a premiere, uh, schedule any video to become public. You're basically like off for a week. If you get a second strike, um, you then can't post for two weeks. And then a third strike, you're permanently banned. So having a warning is kind of a big deal, and especially for like the first time. So I actually like this move that YouTube is doing. They're saying, if you get a warning, you can watch some propaganda video of it's like what you did wrong. And a lot of this seems like it's around kind of like sexual type things. So that you can now watch a video. They say it's a short video and then your warning will be removed. So like you break the rules once, that content's going to be gone, but you can get that warning off so you don't have that strike that can like hurt you financially. It's like a defensive driving course for. Yes. Yeah. It's exactly that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, exactly. And I just like, you can just tell it's so different when you listen to somebody like Elon Musk, love him or hate him, whatever. I don't care where he's like, come put your content on, on X, like everybody's content's welcome here, blah, blah, blah. This is the blog post from Google. They say, we also know receiving a strike can be disruptive to a creator's posting schedule. And for the creators building businesses through our YouTube partner program, receiving an unintentional strike is not only frustrating, but can financially impact their bottom line. You're just saying, and, and this article is impossible to read as well. But anyway, if you get a strike, you can now take a defensive driving course and get rid of it. <laughs> okay. Um, Google is showing the shopping label on some search results snippet. It looks like it's an experiment in the wild, but if somebody offers shopping on Google and the example given was target, you can see the little Google shopping logo next to it. So that's pretty cool. It looks like more visibility in SERPs. Okay. And next up the U S copyright office wants to hear what people think about AI and copyright. The verge has it covered that the U S office or copyright office wants to answer three main questions, how AI models should use copyrighted data and training, whether AI generated material can be copyrighted even without a human involved and how copyright liability would work with AI. So if you have thoughts, (laughs) written comments are due on October 18th and the replies must be submitted to the copyright office by November 15th. I like how this sounds like a homework assignment. Written comments. And if I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have AI draft now. I was gonna say, like, yeah, gonna use people bard. are gonna do that. Mm-hmm. Your bard write something for me. <laughs> what if like AI just starts like spamming it and like sending all these things in? I kind of love That's that. That's when it's really taken over yeah. Yeah. for all of us. Okay, another cool feature in the SERPs, just like the shopping tag or shopping logo there. Google is testing mentioned in search snippets, and I guess it's kind of cool. Also, it's just a potential headache. So the example that was shown, Brody Clark found this in the wild and was looking for a national park coupon code and triple A discounts showed up and underneath it, you can see he's got a GIF. It says mentioned in, and it shows where triple A was mentioned, not necessarily like anything to do with the national park coupon code. So I don't really get how this works, but yeah. They're also talking about parking discounts according to this meta description. Yeah. All it, of this is messed up. But the the mentioned in also like shows a competitor too, because the SERP listing is triple A. Mm-hmm. Underneath it, it's pulling in, oh, it's also mentioned in the Atlanta Journal Constitution. It says AA shows that AARP offers a much higher volume of discounts. Oh, so like yeah. if you're showing up for something. Oh. You mentioned somewhere else. Mm-hmm. It might be a good mention. It might be a bad mention too, you know? Interesting. So like that's just another thing that you could – like uh, I guess just a reason to do good work and have good things written about you. But also it's it stinks if there's, you know, false accusations or pulled up somewhere and it's like AARP is better. Well, then AAA worked hard to get that SERP, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. the Atlanta Journal-Constitution said to go with AARP instead of AAA. I feel like you – should just join both if you're eligible. You just get all the money. Everyone's eligible for AARP. Is that true? Do you even have to be retired? Mm-mm. Hmm. What Should is we even, join? What, you what, want to join? What is the point of it then? Discounts. <laughs> Next up, 85% of titles feature keywords in position one through five of Google. So 90% of those rankings in the top one to five consistently capitalize, use either title or sentence case. 
and this comes from Bright Edge. Uh, 25% of the pages that appear lower in search results are more likely to have grammatical errors in their titles and descriptions. Um, so the key is just put those keywords in there. And I guess this is 95% of pages ranking in the top down have made a description. I feel like 95% of pages have made a description. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, you should. So that's what we should do. We should call this this show Best Digital Marketing News Podcast, the episode. <laughs> that's what it'll be. Right? I like Let's that. see how it works. I like that. Everybody's going to be looking at this like thinking we're spamming. No, it's a no. joke. Okay. Um, and then a funny thing from this article that was written by Danny Goodwin he said, 100% agreement. I never saw, thought I'd see the day where an SEO survey found one thing everybody <laughs> could agree with. But here it is. 70% of enterprise marketers believe having correct titles and meta descriptions is a key priority, while the other 30% of respondents said it was either important or very important. <laughs> it happens! Yeah. Wow! We can have nice things. One uh, thing. <laughs> all right. And... Bing chat now works on Chrome. Yippee. And this was from the Columbus Dispatch. Another story here. Uh, they tried an experiment of writing sports stories using all AI. Do you want to know how it worked out? Yeah. Poorly. <laughs> worked out very poorly. Um, it was, according to um, Axios, uh, there were very vague statements. Um, one example was the AI said, Something that an event was a close encounter of the athletic kind. Wow. We talked about hibernating second half scores, which team drew first blood. Um, and then one of the actual articles was the Worthington Christian bracket, bracket, winning team mascot bracket, bracket, defeated the Westerville North bracket, bracket, <laughs> losing team mascot bracket, bracket, two to one in Ohio boys game on Saturday. If sports was reported like this, I'd I'd pay attention. Absolutely. Let ESPN needs to take notes. Yes. yes. I want then, the mascot. Always. According to the article, this was the entire one entire article that was written again in a in the Columbus Dispatch. It's like a big This is like an actual, yeah, actual newspaper. Yeah. The Steubenville Big Red defeated the Cambridge Bobcats 10 0 in an Ohio boys soccer game on Saturday. A suffocating defense helped Steubenville handle Cambridge 10 0 to nothing in Ohio boys soccer on August 19th. I love that. That's I love it. that. Was recording. August 19th Saturday? That's Let's the whole post. Out. That's really good. <laughs> Let's fact check that. It was indeed a Saturday. Okay, same game. They're right. referring to the same game. All right. And from <laughs> Glenn Gabe, he says, will the first phase of Jarvis be a backpack? Microsoft straps AI to your back <laughs> and it's a patent drop <laughs> item this get you can see like this got the little strap with that little mm -hmm. flaccid thing hanging down like little flaccid strap. He's so happy. And he's this guy. Yeah, he's this, having a good time. And every single thing has like numbers on there, and it looks like there's like like a, a transmitters. Looks like there's microphones, and then number one hundred and two is just his hair. It it's like, did you patent this guy's hair? I think they're saying that the human element is an important part of AI. Oh, okay. And that's well, anyway, why he's so happy. He's like, I matter. Check us out on YouTube if you want to see this this <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> image. Like, how do you even patent that? It's just like little dongles on a backpack. I don't strap. know. This is only figure one, though. I'd love to see figure two. Oh, I'm good with figure one. <laughs> All right, that's it. In organic. <laughs> What's happening in social, bud? All right. First up in social this week, Instagram is testing some new things, including the ability to share comments from any public post or reel in your story. So if you do that, it will share the image that you posted with the comment as a sticker, which sounds kind of stupid when I say it. But if you look at the example they gave, it's actually really nice. I can see brands and creators using this as a way to get people excited about something, make the commenter feel special. Again, more of that engagement and community vibe. Warm and fuzzies are always good for marketing. So that's nice. Um... Something else that they're playing with is astrology stickers. Yay. Um, apparently, the youth is getting back into star signs, and I love to see it. So if you use these astrology stickers in your story, another user can then use it to determine their compatibility with you, which is cool, I guess. I mean, they're talking about friendship. They're like, oh, these people will be driven together. They will have serious chats and hilarious ones. I don't know. If the stars don't align, we will always love you, dear listeners, so don't worry about it. They're trying to attract the Gen Zs with the astrology stuff, I think. Are you an astrology person? Nicole? Not at all. Are you? I 
I don't know anything. No, I like the universe and I believe in things, but I don't know that like the month that I was born matters. Why, yeah, why like what if I was born on the same exact day as somebody's like a giant asshole? Like does that mean I am like I'm the same tendencies as them too? I don't know. I think it has to do with when your moons rise or something mm. like that. I, I don't really know. I think it's fun. I wish I could like it. Yeah. Do you know? Do you even know what sign you are? No, they changed me, and I never remembered. But then they changed it back. Oh, oh, I didn't, I didn't hear. I that. was an Aries, then a Pisces, I think, and then an Aries. But see, like that, that's how you Pisces. know it's just so fake. Yeah, I don't. You I can't don't. change the signs. <laughs> From Glenn Gabe, he posted publishing reels Instagram may be making reels longer to compete with YouTube and TikTok and then has a quote from The Verge says expanding reels from three minutes to ten brings it closer to the length of many YouTube videos though rival TikTok introduced up to 20 minute max for the paid tier that's great I guess they could have just left IGTV in place you know Mr. Masseri if you're listening but then again if he had a crystal ball he probably wouldn't have launched threads when he did either Next up, Snapchat is launching a new generative AI element called Dreams that can place you in fantastical scenarios. And thank goodness it's fake because this girl looks way too happy to be chilling in the middle of a dragon argument. Like those dragons are not happy with each other and she's just like, selfie, but it's not real, so it's fine. It's cool. It looks nice. Twitch streamers looking to get into the Partners Plus program might have a better shot at doing so, maybe. The platform announced an update this week that will make it slightly easier to reach the paid subscriber requirement. Noting, and this is a, a post on X from them, we are updating how to calculate, how we calculate progress toward the Partner Plus program to recognize deeper support from your community. Tier one, two, and three subs will earn you one, two, and six points, respectively, towards your qualifying program. So basically, you need 350 points now, not necessarily 350 individual paid subscribers. So if you're on Twitch, hopefully that helps you a little bit. And last but not least, I'm going to read this directly from the TechCrunch article because it is brilliant. It's time to beta test Meta's greatest technological innovation since the newsfeed. Legs. Now on MetaQuest headsets, you can download an update that lets you walk on two feet, just like our ancient ancestor, the Ardiphysis Ramidus, an early hominid that achieved bipedality 4.4 <laughs> million years ago. Now it comes full circle. I'm still reading. When Meta launched its suite of virtually virtual reality social products, its avatars did not have legs, instead hovering as disembodied torsos. Now our digital likenesses can finally get back on their feet. End quote. Rejoice. Wonder who foots the bill on that. Did I just walk right into that one? You're telling the line, bud. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings us to our real life segment. Straight out of our accounts and into your ear holes. It's time for Working Hard or Hardly Working, where we talk about what's going on in our IRL work. Good, bad, or otherwise. This week in Working Hard or Hardly Working... For me, it's Pmax, okay? I spent over two hours trying to build a freaking Pmax campaign, okay? Screenshots, if you're watching in video, it kept erroring out. I tried editor. I tried desktop. I tried a laptop editor. I tried laptop, desktop, browser, whatever you want to call it. I rebuilt this campaign, I kid you not, six different times before it saved as a draft. And then after that, I couldn't find the draft. So, hardly working. Like working hard for me? Pmax. <laughs> I've got a client where it's B2B lead gen. We are only, again, this I was talking about earlier, going towards SQLs. That's our goal. We are feeding it SQLs. If you feed it just a general lead, if you feed any kind of type of lightweight conversion, Pmax was not for you. But if you feed something further down the funnel, it can work really, really, really well. And we've got one, again, something you would never think Pmax would work for it. It's B2B SaaS, essentially. It is driving not only quality leads, it's converting this month at 77%, where all of Google Ads is converting at 56%. And it's now like our biggest source of leads. So I know people hate on Pmax. I made a shirt and I have a sticker that says Pmin. <laughs> but in this case, it's working really great. If you're not trying Pmax, you should be. If you need help, just let me know. We can figure out or show you how to do it. But Pmax, working hard. I am going to break theme here because I don't Pmax. Um, working hard for me this week, Nicole Waddington and Microsoft Clarity. Because we have been trying for a client to A-B test a certain 
a certain thing. We've been trying to A-B test landing pages and we have been wanting to say, let's try this versus this. And we've said it a bunch of times and it never really resonated before. We also had higher priorities at the time. Girl comes into our meeting today and says, here's what users are doing. I'm showing you this on Microsoft Clarity. Here's the data and we should test this. And it worked. And it's just sometimes you just need that extra little bit of evidence and it was awesome. So working hard, Nicole. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> And now for this week's Cool Tool. As a reminder, our Cool Tool segment is not an official endorsement or paid mention. We're simply sharing something we found in our travels that may be of use to our listeners. And is really, really cool. This week's Cool Tool is really fine if you like reference lines. From at DASFNYC on X by way of latest release, it is the GSC Guardian, which is a free Chrome extension that overlays Google's core updates on top of your search console reports. So it's great for your own reference as well as if you need to provide a visual for your team or your clients. It's just really nice. Puts those reference lines right over your chart so you can see when an update happened. It takes like two seconds to add to Chrome and will make your life easier, SEOs. So as always, we'll have the link in our newsletter, marketingoclock.com slash newsletter, as well as on Discord, community.marketingclock.com. So pick your poison and check it out. Now it's time for our must-read marketing article of the week, an article so advanced, so in-depth, so detailed that we simply cannot cover it in its entirety on today's show. This week's must-read marketing article of the week comes from from Jess Schultz on Search Engine Land. And Jess has an article called An SEO Guide to Optimizing Your Google Publisher Center Account. In case you don't recall or haven't used Google Publisher, it's kind of confusing for the first time that you go in there and set it up. So Jess walks you through the different settings for publications, your content labels that you can use, the optimization by looking at some of the general settings, the sections, um, and then it has a bunch of like cool graphics where you can see um, all the different actions that can happen, where they are, and then how to like, again, look at some of your different followers for Google News. So if you're news specific, these are some of those things that really matter. And Jess has a great article here breaking everything down. Highly recommend it. Thank you, Jess. And now onto a playlist of curated songs to work to, which you can find over at playlist.marketingoclock.com. I will be adding Hear You Me by Jimmy Eat World. <laughs> Jess, what are you adding? Okay, I believe you, but my Tommy Gun Don't by Brand New. All right. And I, I don't think I said this one yet. It wasn't on the list. It's a, it's a Homer pick. It's a good one. It's Wake Up by Arcade Fire. I just... Classic. It hits. I would just like to say I know all three of the songs this week and I'm really <laughs> excited. Middle school Jess is in her glory. All right. That does it for today's show. It is now officially not marketing o'clock. Thanks for listening. Miss you already. Can't wait to see you next week. Thanks for listening to Marketing O'Clock. If you're looking for more information on today's topic, head over to marketingoclock.com slash newsletter to receive every single article we covered. We share the news as it breaks in our Discord community. Head over to community.marketingoclock.com to join. Welcome to Shooting the Hack, where after our famous Friday news shows, we don't talk about marketing anymore. We just shoot the hack. All right. And this week we're playing everybody's favorite game, Travel Buddies. Yeah. And as you heard, I will say the answer is not two eight-year-olds, just for the record, as I explained earlier. So Travel Buddies, you're going to go on a global trip and you're going to have to choose which one of these people you're going to go with. And I think that you're probably going to come out, get a bunch of wins this, this week. The answer is always obvious. Mm -hmm. Always obvious. Okay. So somebody that, that their favorite sandwich is a BLT or somebody whose favorite sandwich is egg salad? I know we have to align. The answer is BLT. I just feel like egg salad is one of those sandwiches that only old people eat. Mm -hmm. And if we're going on a world excursion or trip, they need to keep up. Yeah. And I'm concerned. BLTs for life, right? And I don't even yeah. need to be. Okay, I mean, you have your vegetables, your carbs, your protein. They're going to be well-fueled. Yeah. Agree. Final Concur answer? BLT. BLT. Okay. <clears throat> the correct answer is actually egg salad. BLTs suck. And if somebody out there likes egg salad and can eat egg salad, 
you are never going to have a problem eating world cuisine because they eat dog food and it's their favorite sandwich. Listen, it doesn't matter what you say. I would like to point out to the world that the page you are referencing for this correct answer is your shopping list of things that you need. Yes. <laughs> Smelling salt, <laughs> cordless headset. <laughs> Those are not the answers. You just consulted a fake no, list. There's a, oh, okay. See, it's the other side of the paper. Yeah. I take it back. I but does it say egg salad? Does, uh, is there is one it, Does it check? say egg salad? Yeah, but the, the next the right one answer. down doesn't have a check yet. Uh, because you haven't seen it. You haven't seen it. I'll show you there will be No, I wouldn't want to cheat and get the okay, right so answer. Okay, you're 0 for 1. You're 0 for 1. It's fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. Somebody whose favorite candy is a dum-dum lollipop mm-hmm. or somebody whose favorite candy is a blow pop. Right? Yeah. Okay. That's the thing. That's the thing with the yeah. gum inside. I'm yes. just smiling because I want to hear Nicole's take on this. The gum sucks in those. Like, oh, you like the gum. I like to make like Superman out of them. We unwrap the thing and leave it on and like, oh, phew, yeah, it's really fun. But dum dums are a superior food. What flavor of dum dums? So if you're going to get like the root beer weird, weird ones, like mystery, mystery. I like mystery. Miss, if you're going to eat a mystery dum dum on the trip, then I feel like you're going to have fun on a trip with somebody. That's the one. Plus, there are dum dums, so you can do whatever you want. You can talk them into anything. Okay, is that a final answer? Dum-dums. You're going with dum dums. Yeah. Okay, the correct answer with the check was blow, blow pops. pops. Yeah. yeah, because there's <laughs> gum in it, like multi Bad gum. But it's not, it, it lasts, and it's not sugar free gum. Than fruit stripe gum. They're going to have bad tea. Mm hmm. Dum dums are the worst lollipop ever. They're created. the best no, because they're, they're small. Terrible. You don't need to eat them for hours. They travel better. You could fit more of them. But they don't. But then you have to bring long. separate gum. You're gonna have to bring a separate thing for gum. But better we doing that. This is gonna be somebody. They're probably gonna have like a, a Swiss Army knife. You they're should probably purchase gonna local too. gum if you're traveling. Look, I'm sorry. This is what it says. No, it doesn't say that. Okay, this is where I'm gonna pronounce this incorrectly, and everybody's make fun of me. But somebody whose favorite pasta is spaghetti, or somebody whose favorite pasta is farfielli. Oh, I like those are the bow ties. Farfa- right? I yeah. say farfel. Farfel. Far I, far, I don't know. I know. I bow like tie. the bow ties. Bow, bow ties. tie pasta. Mm-hmm. It's fun. Yeah. 100%. More fun person and probably better dressed. That That's the final mm-hmm. answer? Mm-hmm. And there's not sauce all over them because yeah. spaghetti you cannot eat. And you need to know how to mess. twirl it. Just yeah, you need a spoon. <clears throat> Who's packing a spoon? Yeah. Somebody packing gum, I guess. Okay. Yeah, you, you <laughs> get out of here with that pencil. Changing the right answer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Live. So... <laughs> <laughs> the correct answer was actually spaghetti. Of see the check mark? Yeah, no, I don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> because the person is eating the pasta. They're not wearing the pasta. They're not better you dressed. Can, no, they're, 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 not, eat it. No, they're not they're even eating the pasta I on know, this trip because you have that. said in previous episodes that. that it has nothing to actually do with what's happening Look, on the trip. If you can get somebody whose favorite thing is to eat spaghetti, which is hard to do, they're going to be a, a much, they're going to have better dexterity. They're, People are no, what, what are they more doing? efficient. They just, just want to poke, poke and eat and poke and eat and poke and eat. Oh, your favorite thing is a farfalelli. Oh, it's going to have a toddler. Well, we That's can't travel with you to Italy because you're saying things wrong. It's okay. pronounced spaghetti. <laughs> okay. This is, a th- this is a throwback one here. All right. Somebody that walks around with a toothpick in their mouth. Oh, I love that. Or somebody that walks around with like a blade of grass. You ever see that? Like, uh, like a long piece of straw yeah. with like the seeds oh, on yeah. the end. Toothpick. <laughs> especially, yeah. yeah. Especially if they're grabbing it from like a diner, like when it you're checking out at the diner on the end, and it's minty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If it's free, it's for me. If yeah. there's a free toothpick, I'll take it. Yeah. That grass. You know how hard it is to come by those long ass strands of grass. Like that person, that grass is wilted. You can get a fresh toothpick anywhere. And that person just has good hygiene. The other person mm-hmm. is eating grass. Well, th- that's why they're the correct answer. Why? Because they're getting probably better nutrients. They're probably more healthy folks. They're not getting nutrients from the grass. They're, they're just not even chewing. They're eating. Just, you didn't say and it doesn't it. taste good either. Like, again. A toothpick be, tastes great. Yeah, I the love wood, that one. Right. The, wood yeah. the oat straw doesn't taste good. And they can, they can stomach that. They're going to be able to, again, enjoy the local cuisine better. I just feel like it all comes back to that and it's all wrong. No, no, it's a blade of grass right here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to check my I'm not even going to look at the paper. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for this week. We'll see you next week.